Hello everybody and welcome back to Mercury. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make flat, multicolor 3D prints. These can be keychains, coasters, or whatever you want. Um, and there's no 3D modeling required. The basic premise is we start with a vector, and then we bring it into Mamboo Studio. That's it. Um, it's really simple, I promise you can do it, so let's get into it. The first thing we're going to do is actually locate an image. If you need an image, uh, I like to use Ideogram because you can make really nice and neat little things like this. Um, one thing to note is that if it has the same color as your background, you'll have to use something like Photo P and import your image and just use the paint bucket tool to just fill in all of the white areas in the middle. Use a bright color like red and it should work fine and then you'll bring it over into one of these image to vector tools. I used to recommend this one called vectorizer.ai, but it's recently gone paid. Um, but another really good one to use is this onlineconvert.com. There's also this free one from Adobe that claims to be free forever. All you have to do is upload your photo and you just need an Adobe account. The last one I wanna recommend is vectorizer.io. Um, this one is actually really good because it lets you select the settings. So if I select this one, for example, um, it actually gives me these options and I like to use the stroked layers and the contour algorithm. And that gives me really good results. You can also change the number of colors. So I really just want two colors. And there we go. That is like a really good uh, result from an online generator and it's completely free. Um, you can download, I think, three of them per day for free. So uh, that's really neat. But anyway, I'm actually going to use something that's uh, not going to be starting as an image. I'm going to start with a vector. This is going to be the Buffalo Bills logo. Wikipedia is a great resource to find SVG logos or vectors of any kind, just because they're all publicly available uh, for logos and sports teams and things like that. All you have to do is click on the original file, right click and save as. It'll save as an SVG file and then we're ready to hop into Bamboo Studio. Now that we're in Bamboo Studio, the first thing we're gonna do is change our wall generator from classic to Arachne. This just makes it work a lot better for printing. And then we can finally import our actual SVG file. In this case, I'm doing the Buffalo Bills logo and all of the colors are already separated. The first thing that we'll do now that it's imported is I'll scale it. I only want it to be about half a millimeter thick so I can show you all the different ways you can use it but I would probably recommend two millimeters thick for everyday objects. I'll do 0 0.5 and making sure uniform scale is unchecked. Then I can go into the objects panel. I'll click on each of these parts and I can assign them different filament colors. If you have an AMS and you don't have your filament colors already loaded, just click on this button and click resync. It'll automatically load all of your filament colors. In this case, I need uh, red, white, and blue. So this outline is white, so I'm just gonna leave it that way. This part is gonna be red, so all I have to do is, since it's the sixth filament in here, I press six on my keyboard, and it changes that to red. You might have to adjust the view a little bit. And then the rest of these are gonna be blue. So I'll press nine on my keyboard for blue, nine on my keyboard, and nine again. And you can see as you drag it around, it looks a little bit wonky, but trust me, it'll work. When you go ahead and slice it just to preview it, um, it looks really good. Uh, everything came out fine. If you do want to do something that's not just a useless piece of plastic with a logo, um, unless it's a sign or something, you'll probably want to add or remove some material. So in the case of adding material, that's probably a coaster. Um, so what we will do is We'll just click on our object once, we'll right click, and we'll go to add part, cylinder, click OK. And now we have a cylinder primitive that we can work with. All we have to do is scale it. So with uniform scale unchecked, we'll make it 100 millimeters in the X and Y. And then we'll make it one millimeter in the Z, just for test purposes. And then we have to move it down, so we'll move it to half of the height so that it's sitting on the build plate. And then we can right click center and our design is right there. I think this actually might need to be set at zero. 
Yeah. So this needs to be set at zero and it's inside the build plate a little bit, but that's okay. Next thing that we need to do is we need to move this cylinder up to the top of this parts tab because right now we can't see it at all. If we go ahead and slice the plate, our Bill's logo is completely gone. So we will go back in here. And I'm just going to drag a generic cylinder up to the top of part one. And now if we re-slice, we can see on the bottom there is our Bill's logo. Now I did make a little mistake. Uh, I need to make this flipped so that it's facing the right way on the coaster. So I'll hold shift and select all these. I'll rotate and I'm just going to rotate it in the Y 180 degrees. And that should fix it. So now it's face down on the build plate, but everything should be OK. Um, I don't think that actually worked. You want to do that before you add the generic cylinder and do all of its manipulations because you cannot actually uh, do the individual ones once it's all grouped together. I'm going to undo that and just get rid of the cylinder for now because I don't actually want a coaster. Let's say I want a keychain. I'm going to make this a little bit thicker. Again, uncheck uniform scale and I'll make it two millimeters thick. But what I want to do is I want to remove a little bit of material so I have a hole to stick a keychain loop through. I'm going to click on our object again, right click, go to add negative part, cylinder, click OK. And here is our negative part. This just means wherever this cylinder is, the printer will not print. It doesn't matter what color, what filament, what model is there, it will not print there. So we will go to the scale tool. I'm just going to make it a three millimeter hole, so three by three. And then the Z dimension doesn't actually matter. I'm just going to do five. We'll drag it down to be on the build plate. And then we can just move it to wherever we want on the actual model. I want it to be at this very end so it'll hang off the keychain nicely. We'll slice the plate and there we go. It didn't print in that area because we added that modifier. So that's how you can do keychains and coasters or, of course, signs. If you want to do a coaster where the design is all the way going all the way through, you do the exact same thing as before, but you just make it so that this uh, design is going to be the same Z scale as the cylinder itself. Now, this is great and all, but let's say I didn't have that vector and I was using one of the online image converting websites. If I go back into here and I select uh, this one. I use the stroked layers, but when I import it into Bamboo Studio, if I get rid of this, and then I import this, let's see, sometimes it has some issues with the geometry data, so I want to use the overlap algorithm here, and now we can download it. It looks much better. It's going to take a little bit longer to load, but you'll notice that it actually has the background included. You could remove the background with something like remove.bg online, this website, where you drag, a, you drag your image in, and then it'll remove the background. But the problem with this is that, as you can see, it actually removed the background inside of our image, so that part's not going to print out unless we fill it in with something like PhotoP. Anyway, back to this, the first part's always going to be the background, so we'll just delete that, and now we have the rest of our part. Another thing I noticed with the, these online image converters is that it leaves a lot of these little islands. So if I go ahead and color some of these parts that I want colored, there we go. I have all of the parts that I want colored, colored, but the thing is, I have a bunch of these other like random parts. Actually, in this case, it didn't do it, but you, sometimes you'll get a bunch of random parts that literally come out of nowhere. They're super tiny, but I find that if you delete them, it will leave holes in your print. So what you have to do is just color them the same color as the rest of the base. So I would just go through and assuming these ones were something so little that I can't see it, but it's still in the print, um, I would just go through and color those all. Um, but for this case, it actually worked out pretty well. Anyway, I hope that helped you guys out. Uh, this is just a really quick video on how I personally make most of my uh, 2D, uh, 3D prints that are multicolor because it's just so easy. But yeah, I hope you guys like, share, and subscribe. Um, it really helps the channel out. 
I recently just got monetized, so hopefully I'll be creating a lot more content for you guys. But with that, that's all I have for you today. Have a great day and happy printing.